All right, so today we have a soil mechanics type of problem, and in particular, we're going to be talking about some soil properties, and here's what the question says. Which of the following statements is true as it pertains to the liquid limit of a soil sample? We see our four options available to us. I'm going to go ahead and read them out. The higher the liquid limit, the higher the amount of clay. The higher the liquid limit, the higher the amount of silt. The higher the liquid limit, the higher the compressibility. The higher the liquid limit, the lower the compressibility. So, uh, almost just two different opposite deals there for each choice. Um, and so wh whenever we're looking for some reading material in this guy, uh, this can really, it's going to mainly be a PE problem, but I mean, it's better to practice on the FE just in case. Uh, we're going to be in version 10.2 at the time of this video and uh, section civil engineering. That's going to be our section there. I'm just going to write ENG for short. Uh, and then we're going to be on page 267. Page two six seven. All right, and then for the PE exam, for the PE reference handbook, we're going to be in version one point one, uh, and we're going to be in section three point seven point two, and uh, in particular, we're going to be looking in page one one seven, so one hundred and seventeen. So we need to look on those pages, and you'll find something, some uh, applicable material for this question. However, it's not going to give you. The question. It's not going to give you the answer, right? You need to use some engineering judgment here and really think what is the purpose of the liquid limit? Well, let's remember how it's determined. You have this Casa Grande apparatus and grooving tool, and basically you click this thing until you know the, the groove in the middle collapses, or I think it's like a half an inch or something. Half an inch of that groove is taken away from soil, the soil falls down, uh, and basically it tests. Um, how much moisture or it measures the moisture content at which the sample begins to behave as a liquid at 25 blows so after 25 of those notches uh, whatever the liquid or whatever the moisture content is where the soil becomes uh, the uh, it starts to act like a liquid it starts to come together it starts to flow that is your liquid limit so it's a measure of moisture content right um, all right so if you're looking for like an ASTM maybe on a reminder of how this dude works it's going to be an ASTM 4318 unfortunately for copyright I don't think I'm able to throw that up on the screen or anything but go ahead and Google that look it up pull it up uh, I'm sure there's free PDFs out there on the internet in fact I found one to uh, refresh myself on this um, look at that and basically the way it works is you have four trials right so you test it four times and you increase uh, the uh, moisture content every time and you plot it along an XY axis uh, along the X axis is going to be your blows so I'll just draw here you have your blows right here and then your moisture content is over here I'm just gonna write W percent and so basically at 25 blows you want to find where that moisture content is and that is your liquid limit that's your LL okay so this has got to be at 25 right here all right, um, and so with that said, let's think this through, right? Let's think about how this works. Um, the higher the liquid limit, the more water it takes to act like a liquid, right? So imagine it, the higher the liquid limit, the more the moisture content needs to be at 25 blows. That, that's where it comes from. And so that means, let's think about this, the soil has less water in it it already has less water in it. It needs more water to act like a liquid. Think about it that way. And so with that said, the way that I picture this is if you've ever been out on a construction site for the PE guys, I'm sure you may have, may have seen this, but let's pretend we have sort of like a subgrade, right? And then we have a truck. I'm gonna try and draw a truck here. Let's see how good I am. Okay, there's kind of like a dump truck, right? And sometimes whenever you have like some really wet soil, some really dense, or not dense, but uh, really wet soil. It's hard to compact it. And you're going to have these things called rutting, right? And so you're going to have ruts behind your tires um, or uh, pumping, pumping, if you will. Pumping is another one where you're, if you have a high moisture content in your soil, uh, you're going to have this sort of pumping action as you roll over it. In fact, Google it. Google it right now. Google what pumping is uh, with, um, with soil. And so uh, think about it, that soil already has a lot of water in it. It already has a lot of moisture in it. It's going to be hard to compress that. It's going to be hard to compact that because the, uh, the, the soil molecules are actually fighting with the water. It's not able to compact very well. And so with that said, the answer is actually C. 
So think about it. The higher the liquid limit, the more water it takes for a soil to start acting like a liquid, the higher the compressibility, the easier it is to compact. So this is a really good theory problem, and I hope this video helps. I hope it clears some things up, and we'll catch you next time.